this video, we will explain the foundation in Fire Detection Alarms Unit. We will help you understand what you will study, how you are assessed, and what other courses you can study following the foundation in Fire Detection Alarms Unit. This unit is the first unit to be studied on the qualification pathway. It can be studied on its own for your own knowledge or in conjunction with the other units to obtain a qualification in fire detection and alarm systems. This unit of study may be right for you if you are working within the fire detection and alarm industry and wish to gain a broader understanding of best practice and standards. If you are a fire detection alarm designer, installer, maintainer or commissioner or hoping to be working within that capacity, then this course will be the first step along the way to studying further units in those areas with us. If you are an employer of technicians within these fields, then all of the following information will help you ascertain whether the foundation unit and the subsequent units of study that lead to the qualification will be right for your business. We'll explain what other units are available at the end of this video, so keep watching. The Foundation in Fire Detection Alarms course is a two-day intensive course and is run throughout the year at a wide range of locations across the UK. Training is delivered face-to-face -face in class by professionals within the fire industry who have a background of both training and extensive technical expertise. By joining one of our classes, you'll meet other professionals in your sector and receive a course handbook on day one of the course, which contains everything covered in class, which of course you can keep. As the name Foundation suggests, this course covers a broad base of knowledge that will prepare learners to undertake further fire detection alarm courses. By the end of the course, learners should be able to explain a wide range of topics, which we'll cover throughout this video. There are 10 areas within the syllabus, and all of these are assessed. The 10 areas of study are legislation, standards, codes of practice, guidance, and technical notes, working with third parties, documentation, fire events, passive protection, fire detection alarm system technology, system design, explosive environments, and false alarms and unwanted fire signals. Each area is given sufficient detail but will help broaden a learner's knowledge before going on to specialise in further areas of fire detection and alarm systems. You can find out more about the specialist courses at the end of this video. Okay, so let's get started. To give you a clear picture of the 10 areas, we'll now break down the areas of study individually. Legislation. This section covers all of the fire safety legislation that you need to know and explains how it is different according to each country within the UK. It goes into further detail about who is ultimately responsible for fire safety within a building and how companies that service those can also be responsible and why. The legislation section also covers EU directives such as the Low Voltage Directive and the commonly seen CE mark. Learners will gain an understanding of what the CE mark is and in addition learners will also learn safe and proper disposal of electronic equipment and the legislation that governs this as well as the construction products regulations. The final area looked at under the legislation section is the Equality Act 2010 and what impact this has for building users with disabilities in the event of a fire. This is necessary for service technicians to understand so that fire detection alarm systems can be installed in a way that best fits the needs of those within the building. Standards, Codes of Practice, Guidance and Technical Notes. This section of the course explains to learners what standards are and the difference between these and Codes of Practice, Guidance and Technical Notes. Standards such as 
EN54, the primary product standard for fire detection alarm systems are covered, as well as BS5839, parts 1, 6, 8 and 9. The standards for non-domestic and domestic buildings, voice alarms and disabled refuge areas and fire telephones. This section is very comprehensive and also helps learners understand and explain the difference between the different categories of fire system, which is great for those that find it difficult to identify which system is which. It also covers zone plans, end user documentation such as logbooks and how these should be used, and the use, purpose and recording of agreed variations. This section is one of the biggest on the course, so not everything studied is mentioned here, but you can always speak to a member of the FIA team to get further clarification of the topic areas. Working with third parties. This section contains essential information about different types of contracts, best practice for contract management, as well as an explanation of third party certification schemes, such as BAEF SP203 Part 1 and LPS 1014. It also gives an awareness to learners about insurance and how insurance requirements can affect fire safety. It might seem like a short topic area from this explanation, but again, the course expands greatly in all of these areas to explain to technicians the relevant paperwork required. Documentation. In this section of the course, learners will be given a comprehensive introduction to the required documentation for a fire detection alarm system, such as system drawings, the fire strategy, the fire risk assessment, the system certificates and who is responsible for these. Learners will not only come to know the names of each document but also state the purpose of each document and how these are used, which is absolutely vital for any technician. Fire events. This section actually looks at fire itself and how it starts, behaves and can be extinguished. The good thing about this section is that technicians can get a really good understanding of fire stopping and how fires spread through walls, which is important when creating a fire alarm system that probably involves creating small holes in the walls for cabling. Another aspect looked at in this section is alarm verification, as well as policies and procedures in the event of a fire, including evacuation policies and how these might affect the alarm system. For example, having a stay put policy or a phased evacuation. Technicians should come away being able to explain the relative benefits and pitfalls of automated fire detection versus human investigation. This section is quite big, but the animations and videos shown in this section of the course should really help demonstrate these concepts visually to learners. Passive protection. Passive protection is a key thing for fire detection alarm technicians to understand, so this section of the course explains exactly what passive fire protection is and helps learners to understand the importance of it, as well as giving an understanding of the need to protect the integrity of any passive fire protection that is already in place. Learners get a good sense of different building materials and how they react to fire, as well as the different kinds of fire resistant coatings and seals that can be put in place to stop fire from spreading. Fire detection and alarm system technology. This section of the foundation in fire detection alarms course looks at the different types of detectors, point, linear, beam, aspirating, video and flame detection, as well as different types of alarm technology bells, sounders, visual alarms, as well as voice and vibration based alarms and their uses. By studying this, learners will gain an in-depth knowledge of the pros and cons of the different technologies and be able to give a brief description of the technologies for alarm receiving centres. There is so much more involved in this section, but this should give you a good idea of what is covered. System design. This is another really key section of the foundation course as it covers the requirements of BS5839. Learners will gain an understanding of the different levels of protection and the importance of selecting the right system category. It also covers vital areas such as zone planning, 
positioning of fire detection alarm equipment and cabling. Learners will be able to explain design considerations for different situations, such as where detectors should be placed, even in difficult areas such as pitched roofs, and be able to set out very simple design plans based on the zone plans given. Other areas like area coverage for the different types of detectors and sounders are studied, as well as the cause and effect programming of the system. In addition, learners will also be able to explain CDM regulations and how these affect system design. Explosive environments. Occasionally, in this line of work, technicians might be entering a potentially explosive environment. So they're going to need to know how to spot hazards leading to explosions and know what types of environments would be considered explosive. It will help technicians learn how to recognise and mitigate the risks. And finally, the last topic covered in this course is false alarms and unwanted fire signals. Irritating when they go off unnecessarily, false alarms and unwanted fire signals can be hugely disruptive. So in this section of the course, we teach you about management and reduction of false alarms and unwanted fire signals and the difference between these two phenomena. You'll get to understand exactly what steps are taken by the fire and rescue services, as well as the causes of false alarms and unwanted fire signals. As we said before, we haven't been able to mention absolutely every single topic covered in each individual section of this unit, but this video should hopefully give you a detailed enough overview for you to understand how much content is actually getting covered. The aim of this course is to give technicians a broad knowledge and understanding of a wide range of topics which may impact their work and builds a starting block for further study. After taking this course, you can go on to study other units in the qualification in any order. Jump straight into design, installation, maintenance or commissioning or visit important principles on our other two units, health and safety and work, or the environmental unit. The key aspect to remember is that whether you choose to specialise in design, installation, maintenance or commissioning, you'll need to study this foundation course first. This course does end with a formal exam, which is taken digitally on a tablet in standard examination conditions, and you'll get your result instantly on screen following the exam. Once this has been confirmed by the awarding organisation, Congratulations, you've passed. You'll be free to progress onto the advanced specialist units. If you'd like more information, please download our prospectus by clicking the link in the top right. And we look forward to having you in one of our classes soon. Thanks for watching.